Hello everyone, my name is Sandeep Sengupta and you are watching Electric Vehicles. In this video, we will talk about the TVS iCube again. We are continuing the series where we spoke about three videos lined up for you. This is the second video in the series. In this video, we will tell you why the TVS iCube is more important than you think it is. Now the most important factor before you buy an electric vehicle these days has got to be the battery. We really want the battery pack to be safe and secure so that it does not result in into loss of life or property. You will be happy to know that the TVS iCube comes with an AIS-156 certification for its battery pack. Now what is this AIS-156 certification? Why is it so important is the topic of this video. Now we researched on this and we have come up with something very interesting that we thought you should know. Once we tell you about this, you will know that you can take your IQ through rain, through flood and even through real high temperatures before the battery pack even thinks of breaking down. Why is that? Why are we so confident about it is the topic of this video. Now the confidence regarding iCube's battery pack comes from the fact that AIS 156 certification is very difficult to get. It is the battery testing protocol that is set up by the Indian government and you would be happy to know that AIS 156 certification is one of the toughest in the entire world, one of the toughest certificates to get. It is much tougher than the one that is followed in the US. Now a natural question would be if AIS 156 certification which is the Indian certification for battery vehicles if it is so difficult to get how come we see battery packs exploding every other day. Now that is because there is a flaw which the manufacturers are exploiting. Let me tell you first about AIS 048. AIS 048 or AIS 48 is a certification protocol, the testing protocol that has been in existence since quite some time now. It was developed from the times when we used to sell uh, lead acid battery packs. Now as you would know that lead acid battery packs are inherently more stable than a lithium ion battery pack. Therefore a certification test that was developed for lead acid battery pack does not really judge a lithium ion battery pack. Now the problem is this that once the government came up, once the Indian government came up with AIS 156 certification for lead acid, sorry, for lithium ion battery pack, it did not mandate a lithium ion manufacturer to go get the AIS 156 certification. So what the government is effectively saying is there are two certifications in the market. One is AIS 48, the older one, the not so strict one and AIS 156, the latest one, the more strict one. Now, Tell me if you are a manufacturer who knows that he or she does not have good battery packs who has probably uh, imported some poor quality cells, do you, will you ever think of attempting the AIS 156 certification? You will not. You will go for the AIS 48 and sell your subpar scooters or uh, subpar battery packs with the certification. That is why TVS iCube becomes so important because it is one of those very few manufacturers who has come up and taken the AIS 156 certification and passed it. A battery pack that has the AIS 156 certification goes through vibration test, very important given our Indian road conditions, thermal test, one for the rising temperatures, shock test, external short circuit test, mechanical drop test, which is handy in case of collisions, overcharge and over discharge test, voltage fluctuation test and water resistance test. After all these tests, a battery pack is again checked for any leakage in terms of uh, electrolyte or fumes. Now that is called the emission test wherein any harmful gases is caught. Now although there are so many tests, we will not be going through all of them in this video, it is not possible. We will just go through some of the interesting ones, how these tests are uh, carried out, we will tell you about that in this video. But all the details will be available in the government circular, the link of which will be in the description of this video. Now let's start with the most burning topic, which is of course the fire test, pun intended. Okay, so two minutes of direct flames and indirect flames. What it means is a battery pack is put directly on top of flames, kept there for a minute and then taken and kept on a metal sheet and kept on top of a flame for another minute. If the battery pack passes it, then it is fire test pass. All the details is given in page 63 and extra 8e. You will see the fire resistance test starting from here. Scroll down to page 65 where you see figure number 2 where you can see that the battery pack is directly placed over the flames and the time duration is specified to be 70 seconds. Scroll down and you come to figure 3 where immediately this battery pack that was 
on direct flames for 70 seconds is taken and kept on a metal sheet and placed on top of the flames again and kept there for 60 seconds. Now once this test is done, the battery pack is then monitored for the next 3 hours for any leakage of electrolytes or fumes. Now that was the fire test. Let's take our battery pack from fire and dip it into water now. We are going to water resistance test. Move to page 77 where you can see how you can wash your battery pack. Here the battery pack that is used for test purpose is IPX5. Now you would be aware that IPX5 or let's say IPXY, this is the rating that tells you how resistance the battery pack is to X stands for dust and Y stands for water. In this case, the battery pack that was used is an IPX5 rated battery pack. But mind you, the iCube comes with IP67, which is two generations ahead of what was used in these testings. Now let's see what was tested in this water test. So you can see the conditions here. The nozzle diameter is given, the nozzle distance from the battery pack is given, and also the water pressure is given, which happens to be around 12.5 liters per minute. This was done for the next three minutes. Now let's move to page 13 where you can see the flood test. The battery pack was passed through a weight pool. The depth of the weight pool is kept at 10 centimeters and the battery pack is taken at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour and driven for an entirety of half a kilometer. If the battery pack survives this flood test, then it is good to go and it gets an AIS 156 certification. Now let's move to page 14 where you will see the heavy rainfall test. Now mind you, for this a battery pack of IPX3 rating was used, which is 4 generation older than what the iCube is using. Now for this, 10 liters of water was poured into the battery pack per minute for a continuous of 5 minutes. If the battery pack survived this test and all those hundreds of tests that are listed in the government PDF that you will find in the description of this video, if a battery pack passes through all of these, then it gets an AIS 156 certified and that is what TVS is claiming for its iCube models. This is extremely important and I think the Indian government is now very strict about the battery pack safety and very soon all vehicles will be mandatorily carrying the AIS 156 certified. For now though, TVS is one of the few models that can claim to have an AIS 150 certification. If you happen to like this video, then do share it with your friends and family. It took a lot of research to present all this content to you and we hope that it will help you in your buying decision. We'll meet again with the third video in this series, which is once you've decided to buy the IQ, which one of the three models available should you go for? We'll meet again. Go green, go electric.